Hi ho peeps, hi ho, welcome one, welcome all. Hope you all are ready for this is episode nine of Shambolics and uh, for our Dungeons and Dragons adventure. Should be live now. That's awesome. Uh, I'm just going to join the rest of them. Uh, we are still waiting on Mr. Jonah Bob, the late Jonah Bob. Uh, um, Bard is Jonah Bob. Speaking of the little Jonah Bob, there he is. Hi. Hello. Hello. Hey, Jonah Bob. How are you doing? How are we? Glad you guys are. You guys well. I'm doing as well as I can be. Good. I would prefer it if you were doing better than that, but okay. <laughs> I mean, I am, but I, I've got a, a new job. Hey. Oh, sweet. Still in training. That's good news. And, yeah, it is. And it's going to be taking up a bunch of my time. So I've also mm. been informed that we want to end this, kind of wrap up the storyline real quick and like leave it be. So that works out really well for me in uh, these new times. So. Okay. <laughs> Well, well, we've got another what two hours today, and then we've got another maybe two hours next time. It, it might be that you guys do this run, come back and be like, you know what, uh, we we need to go and we need we think it's time for us to part our separate ways and uh, explore different explore different people. I guess. <laughs> explore different people. <laughs> okay. It is what it is. Team, but team, I... team Shambolox, disassemble Bollox as well. We've disassembled. <laughs> team Bollox. We've, you know, like you said, you know, you weren't expecting us to go past one, so we're on nine. I mean, yeah. Yeah. We're uh, still past <laughs> I would say you are, like, near the tail end of noobs. What would be what I would measure not being noobs is like you guys know your characters super well. You kind of know the rules a bit better. You might have your own PDFs or books for the the stuff and be able to look up and start creating new characters. But you are definitely not noob noobs. Well, that's something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you now have probably no, enough. You probably have enough experience to to either go to another campaign or set up another thing, and mm. have a lot more fun. No, you've been a ter you've been a terrific dungeon master, to be honest. Yeah, you've been great. So no, I, I don't want to say I know that, but I mean that. <laughs> <laughs> you'd be able to go to other people and ha try different styles of DMing, or uh, no, I am cool. fantastic. I am fantastic, but it's one of those things where it's like, oh hey, uh, it's been a while since I played D and D. Uh, hey, you got a spot open in your game. I'm, I am literally. Uh, most weeks I am in either running or in four different games, so I don't I don't advise doing that. That is a uh, a lot of my time, and mm -hmm. it is literally possibly going to be a problem with like work and stuff. I'm going to try to achieve with that, but it's D and D is one of those things you let consume your soul and a lot of your time. Hi, Johnny. But, uh. Sorry. Yeah. And you let it consume your soul and a lot of your time. And if you can't set aside, like, my Sunday game, uh, the DM literally says, All right, I'm going to be doing this about two hours because we're all adults. We all have work tomorrow and we're all busy. Um, mm. That sometimes leaves a little bit to be desired for, like, role play and stuff. But I can get this, something like that, and I can easily get this wrapped up either today if you guys survive or uh next week and just be like and they've and legends tells of shambolics 
and sometimes mm. the band gets back together. Anyway. Not so, always maybe a time for like three hours. Return in an all three female hours. reboot. Everyone's gender swapped, so Sarah's gonna die. And everyone else is a chick. You say there will be uh, Thor in the Ghostbusters or Pretty much. Ghostbusters. Oh. Okay. So, yeah. uh, since we have apparently a limited amount of time, uh, I think we should get into it. Set rock and roll. Alright, so when left we last our heroes. Uh, they were in the city of Imbendra. They had been contacted by an uh, individual named Thaddeus Sweet, the uh, purveyor of magical items and other interesting things. And he requested of them that they prepare for an expedition and travel to uh, another part of the, the world and go into a, an underground location in order to look for magical items. Uh, during their time off, it took about two weeks for them to get ready. Uh, they were provided with information as to the, the location of how to enter the city uh, and to uh, get to the areas and kind of what Sweet Tea would pay more for or what he was actually looking for in exchange for the payment of the magical orb. The 2,000 apiece, I believe it was, and gold pieces, and 10% uh, of all the findings. So... Uh, the information that you received was that you're traveling to an area referred to as the Lumbian Underground. Uh, it is a leftover remnants of a civilization that has, for the most part, fallen out of prominence. Uh, within the past 200 years, people really don't know about it. So if you go up to someone on the street and say, Hey, what do you know about the Lumbians? They're going to be like, What in the hell is a Lumbian? Uh, mm -hmm. After that kind of quick time you contact uh, your uh, you get to Zerai uh, associates they take you aboard the uh, the plane no I was struck by some uh, inspiration I know exactly how I'm going to have you guys uh, story end it could happen this time it could happen another time but uh, are we going to crash the plane and all die <laughs> close <laughs> no uh, uh, isn't it possible that that's how it ends? <laughs> I did not hear any of that. No. It doesn't matter. <laughs> so, um, you guys are traveling. It's about... It would be multi a multiple month journey by the main road. But it takes a couple of days with the, the flying technology that they have, which lands you, uh, bringing you back to the main, uh, main map. It's, you see those three, like, little towns in the middle of nowhere south of North Spire? Yep. It's yep. somewhere around there. So, the, okay. as you go across, you see the, the open fields, the, there's a number of different camps that you, you pass by that are obviously part of the invading force. Uh, but there's none really around this area. And as you kind of come in and are dropped off you notice that the area has a number of these very strange looking uh, holes in the ground they're very placed at regular intervals some have dense clusters of them they have uh, three crossbars on them uh, one at the top uh, one slightly lower than that and very uh, wide and then a small one at the bottom it looks very much like uh, a variation of a cross uh, and they get very dense around the uh, the area where you're told there is a mine shaft that leads into the Lumbian underground itself. You make your way in, passing down the left hand corner, and after a quick scare of a uh, large demon appearing, you quickly figure out that it was an illusion. Uh, making your way down, down, and ever deeper into the mine, you find this large, large door. It's probably about 15 feet wide, about 10 feet high. Uh, you were informed that the caretakers of this area know you are coming, and so you won't really see them, but they'll they'll let you in. But there is some danger. Okay. You were informed how to open the door. The door swings open quietly, and 
kind of this back pressure of cool air comes up from the ever darkening hallways. This, for a lot of you, especially Mandrake Stonebreaker, this is very home to you because you grew up in the Underdark. This is this is kind of like, like going to another neighborhood from where you were from. Uh, yeah. Slightly different styles, but still, you're you're very comfortable with this. Uh, most of you, I think, everyone except Callum and eighty six have dark vision. So that means that you can see very well in the dark. In earlier versions of the game, it means that uh, if you were tossed into a place that had absolutely no light, you would see everything in black and white with very a little bit of troubles with depth perception. But in this game, it's just like everything is just kind of barely lit uh, with dark vision now. Which means you see real good underground. Who's see holding you? my hand? That's not my hand. You were obviously you obviously brought candles and torches and other things, and it's quite easy for you to light one of those up to spread enough light. Now, as you make your way down the the place, the the tunnel, it has very nice stonework. Uh, very large slabs of stone are the. The floor, and there is uh, good carving on the walls. It's, it's very plain for most of it. It's this kind of darkish purple stone. Uh, it doesn't really, it kind of absorbs light more than you'd expect it would. And as you're walking through, you see that there is, of course, a lot of dust kind of set up around here. It's as if it's been not really disturbed, but there are these very strange. There seems to be some old footprints, as if someone else had come down here in the last maybe year. But there is, it looks like somebody took a broom and kind of swept, swept the path. And they did a really poor job of it, like it was, it was an improvised broom. And they just kind of put it in two to three different lines, and they, they're just wide enough that they are almost about like shoulder width like somebody was walking they, they tied two brooms to you themselves and they walked with these brooms attached to their feet it's like what the hell is this with this what's this what, what is this uh and as you're wondering this you walk falls first what into a set of you walk balls first you walk balls, balls first, first. <laughs> balls first yeah yeah all right you see ahead of you a number of these scarecrows just standing in the middle of this tiny tunnel, not moving. Okay, what, what am I in on here? Uh, you are this one, uh, remember Paul? And the bird is, of course, you're on Kokra. This would be a lot better if you had, like, tokens and stuff, but... It is what it is. Okay. Uh, as you kind of attempt to approach them, the scarecrows, the back, the these first two, right here and right here, they are facing away from you. But as you get closer, they turn around, and you see kind of this burning fire within the their sack-like faces, and some of them that do have the stereotypical pumpkin, uh, and the other ones also turn, and they begin moving towards you. Ooh. And with that, I'm going to pull up some things, because I've actually gotten better at this. Is this the... Yes, it's the turn order. Okay, I need... I'm just going to... Is this where we don't? Ooh. No, we don't die here. Not if you can help it. <coughs> Our leader Dougie will help us. Heal you. I need everyone to click on their tokens. Click and have the, the three dots around their tokens. And then I need you to roll me some initiative. That way... Uh, yes, so uh, your little character pictures. Not character pictures. These things. I can have them. It's like the the the, the, the red, green, and the blue circles. 
or the the the, the two the one with the Vicog or the when when you click on have those present, then mm -hmm. go over to the right hand side, open up the journal, which is, looks like a little loose paper. Open up your character sheet and click the initiative button, which is in the, the center upper part of the yeah of your character sheet. Tran, is there any way for me to move this? Because it's way it's way at the left. Uh, that is unfortunately no, because this is how I made this map very small. Right, okay. I can't, I can't shift it over very much. It's Roll Twenty has its limitations, and I don't want to yeah. make every single thing super huge. And then say, "Oh yeah, that that part of the map isn't really." So we've got character <laughs> sheet, and then where am we going? All right, you're gonna look at your character sheet. Bring up the character sheet in the core. You see your name. <laughs> Just to the saddle, just to the slight right of it, there's a thing that says initiative. Click on the word initiative. Yeah. They've changed the interface for this a little bit as well. Yeah. Where's the initiative here? Oh, in the middle four. Yeah, okay. Okay. Initiative. Reduced height. I win. I am a slow bastard. What's this for? This is initiative. This is these things are attempting to fight you. Yeah, but they're about to enter combat is. Oh crap, does that mean I'm gonna fight yeah. first? Yeah. Yep. Easy peasy. We'll Lock your nose, is everyone. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm gonna move oh, that on. again. Then it says there's like three three circles, red circles, enter value into box or enter modification like by Plus. Don't uh, don't uh, pay Cut. attention to those. Those are more. Those are not used for our purposes currently. Oh okay. So don't bother yourselves with them. Now what am I rolling for? Their initiative. Why? The turn order is like. Is it Hat goes All first, right. then seventeens, and then nine. Is it? Yep. Oh. That's uh, this is one of the the better things. Um, so yeah, they, they're moving towards you, or they, they start shifting around, yeah, obviously they just, like, pivot in place, and they just start looking at you, that's kind of freaky, and, uh, so, uh, starting off at the beginning of the round, Hatter, it is your turn, what are you doing, hang on, I have to adjust this, uh, no, that's the wrong one, there we go. I am going to start with my token, Shatter. Um, right, where are you casting that? That's, if I remember correctly, a... Is it 10 foot radius? Something like that. Uh, 10 foot radius, so pretty much where you are looks pretty good to do it. Okay. Four. Okay. Uh, right. Roll me an attack. Should be in your central column. Oh attack. yeah, sorry. Okay. Unless it's just a saving throw. Let me look at your. Okay, sixteen feet. Oh, you max damage. Congratulations. They're all dead. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm just looking at your page really quickly, just to see what it does. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Constitution saving throw, fantastic. I set that up a bit poorly, so I am improving on my kind of technical side of things rather than storytelling a little bit better than before. Okay, they fail their saving throw, uh, and they are dealt. 24 uh, points of uh, damage. Come on. There we go. 24, 24, 24. I don't know why I'm group rolling this. This is definitely not something I should be doing normally. But they, uh, these four just kind of have some of the stuff thing knocked out of them as this very loud, shattering thunder erupts from between them and it, it 
it's very bad to do this in an enclosed space. Your ears are a little bit ringy, even though. Oh yeah, good point. <laughs> but they're damaged, and you're just kind of uncomfortable. Does that end your turn, Adam? Um, yeah, body of a jar. Okay, it's like it's like a breach and clear thing. <laughs> All right, Paul. Yeah. It's your turn. I will go straight into him. So I do sneak attack first, yeah? And then rapier and dagger, yeah? No, uh, you roll to hit, and sneak attack is added to your uh, attack. It's kind of like the icing on top. Right. And then got dagger. Uh, are you going to actually move up to them? Because they're 60 feet away. Okay. okay. Yeah, and you get through at them. Uh, can I get in behind him? Uh, let me look at your speed. Your speed currently is 30. In order to reach them, you're going to... Wait! You have boots of haste. You can <laughs> click those. They'll double your movement speed, and you'll be able to get... You'll be able to, uh... As a free action, you'll be able to just click, click your boots of haste, and you will, um... Be able to get to about... Here, you won't be able to get behind them. Sneak okay. attack doesn't necessarily work that way. Uh, you either have to be hidden and then attack them, or you have to be flanking with someone. So someone has to be here while you are here in order to get the sneak attack bonus. So you will not get sneak attack bonus for this current attack once you right. get up to there. But you do get, if I remember, you have two attacks now because you're level six. So you get an extra uh, set of attacks after that. So instead of rolling your rapier, um, kind of mounted bank. Can I? I can, I can see it. Yeah, that's that's a that's a teleport. I would not see us doing uh, that here. Okay, which okay. um, which option Trent is the measuring line? Uh, it is the weird circle with like something being shoved like into it underneath. Here, the, yeah. And then uh, the snap to. Snap to center is what I generally. Okay, sweet. Thank you. Yep. Uh, so, let's move your weapon up there. Mm -hmm. Uh, roll oh. me. That it's first rate your hit does work. Okay, so I'll do the dagger now, yeah? Yep. That works. I think I don't think you have two attacks yet at level six, but with the boots of haste active, you do get another set of attacks, so you can attack again with your rapier and daggers. Okay, so let's just make your dagger run. Mm -hmm. By the way, these are uh, everything except the the last dagger hits. Mm. Okay. Me done. Uh, you have to roll me some damage. Oh. So click on rapier, dagger, rapier, dagger for each one of those. So that I know how much damage to put in it if you kill this thing or not. Uh, take sneak attack off. Huh? What? Well, uh, where's sneak attack? Oh, That's bomb. There's a little check. Um, you should be able to undo that quite easily. What, on the character sheet? On your character sheet, yeah. Bring that back up. Oops. Yeah. So there is uh, at the bottom of your tax. There's a thing that says sneak attack. Just uncheck yeah. that. Is that right? No, no. In your tax. Oh, oh, I check it. Right. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay. Okay. Uh, most fastest ninja like Rogan. Or? Yeah. <laughs> no, you, you guys are still getting used to this stuff. You like. literally. I've I've been playing D and D almost consistently every week for the last two years, <coughs> so I do not expect you to be like, yes, I know everything about my character sheet, and yes, I know exactly what to poke, uh, when I when it's been literally months between your sessions. Uh, it's just like my stupid mm. laptop doesn't let me do two screens without losing one of them. Uh, yeah. Um. So I'm doing the other. Yeah, the other two. Yeah. Yeah. Twenty points of damage so far, plus five, twenty-five. You said the last and one you just hit, didn't you? 
So that yeah. would be damage with it. So just so 25 points of damage dealt to this man. Uh, I don't think you have anything else you can do on your turn. So now it is Dongo the Wizard. I'm gonna. Doggy, do you have a healing spell? Um. I think I do, um, John above. Okay. Uh, I should have mentioned the earlier then. Right, we're, 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 we're at help. We're, should, but, all right. We're, we're at healing, healing bee. You guys, had, you guys have two to three weeks of downtime between this. You are at currently full hit points. So oh, okay. If you got to upgrade that, that should not be, uh, that should not be there. Okay. I'm going to really use... Guys Oh, well, uh, if, if we're all back to normal health, then... Um... Oh, wait, well, am I supposed to be adding stats to my guy? Stats? No, like basically the... where the hit point maximum is. Yeah. Oh, okay. We... No, just because you, you asked us what we were doing, and, and uh, me and Callum were training or something like that. I mean, you were yeah. training me. Yeah. That, that's more of a... <laughs> we were doing rough that, that's not very... From that would not be um, would not have carried over to this alright so no yes. I'm, I'm well there's there's scarecrows so I'm going to use a firebolt yes 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 have I got anything to so, protect me from fire <laughs> uh, yeah be careful where you aim that doggy oh well I'll, I'll aim for the three on the right uh, uh, firebolt is a single target uh, alright uh, aim for the furthest right is one. that the same with the fireball Fireball is an area attack that is just kind of like napalm that goes around corners. Earlier variations of the spell would could was a square area, and they would use it to clear out dungeons. But uh, I would not suggest using fireball in here. <laughs> fireball, 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 fireball. <laughs> because uh, when you go down that's like it's just like a twenty foot radius. So while it will get everyone, it will also get your comrades. Ah. Uh. If you aim it at the back wall, it'll be fine. Did you take one for the team, Paul? I did last time. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we all it, took we? one for the team with that as gas. Um, okay, I'll go firebolt. Bolt, bolt. Firebolt. Yeah. Okay. So I just click it, don't I? Is that right? Yep. Click, click it in the spell to attack. Okay. That um, unfortunately does not hit. Balls. So you just kind of like, oh, oh my god, oh, living oh. scarecrows! Mm. And it just kind of hits the uh, the top of the ceiling. It's like, okay, maybe that wasn't the best thing. Yeah, move back, Paul, on your next one. Yeah. Okay, uh, if that ends your turn. Well, I'd, I'd, I'd like to throw another one, but... So the spell casting does... Uh, you can have... You have your attack action and you have your bonus action. In that, in the balancing rules of 5e, you can only cast a cantrip and then a higher level spell. So it would also have to require to either fit into the bonus action or a standard action number. I think Firebolt is a standard action. I'll so I'm done then. Is, yes. <laughs> I'll skip. Column. Should have fired a um, Have I got any um, long range attack? I believe you have. Oh, yes, actually, you do. Let's look at some of the things since this is probably going to be the only times you guys get to use um, these abilities. Um, you have a Fist of Unbroken Air. So you're going to spend two of your six key points. And you have to get within 30 feet of them, though. Uh, now I move within 30 feet of them and then do it on one roll. You, on you, one have, you, can, you can move and you can do your attacks. Those are the, the two major things you're going to be able to do on each of your turns. Uh, okay, yeah, I move close enough then. So, yeah, you have to get about here. With your fly speed, your fly, your speed is forty. So 
you can get here, which is perfectly distanced for that. Oh no. Yeah, that's I put them just a little too short. So uh, I'm just I'm I'm taking a lot of this uh, uh, you, can, you can totally hit oh. Paul, Callum. <laughs> so I'm taking a lot of the stuff and modifying some of your things on your sheets a little bit out of your hands just to get this moving faster since we want to wrap up. But uh, as you kind of you fly close to them and you kind of skid to a stop and you use that momentum to throw a punch and you guys see kind of like this almost ghostly air hand comes off of his fist and goes right at one of the scarecrows. And I need to make a strength save, which is um, three. He does not make the save, because I'm pretty sure you actually do have a decent save. So he takes uh, uh, click on Fist of Unbroken Air and attacks and spellcasting for me, Colin. Right. Uh, 18 bludgeoning damage. So even more of the stuffing is knocked out. Actually, the first bit of stuffing is knocked out of this uh, scarecrow, and there's like this kind of sunken hole in the bottom of its gut uh, where it was. Uh, is there anything else you would like to do at all? No. Okay. And now it's the scarecrow's turn. I know I got a ton of spell. Huh? You didn't click on your character and roll initiative for me. Wait. I thought it says you wanted to send the results of this roll to the thumb tracker, but no valid token was selected. Oh, okay. Yeah, you, you, you have to click I must on have pressed something wrong. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I can easily add you. Can, you can, can click on it and roll it again. Or you can take your initiative of 15. Uh... Oh, you can still see that? Yeah. Yeah, this, oh, okay. I, I can scroll, everyone can scroll back up in the chat. Okay. So, click on the, uh, click and have the, your, your character highlight with the, the three circles above and the two circles below. There, there we go. go. Oh, hey, it's the exact same thing. All right, so <laughs> I am going Sandy. to, two, there we go, bing, bing, bing. Uh, technically, you should have gone before Colum, but we can have you take your turn now, and then we'll get. Well, to you just want to pass? Um, I just just pass so we can get, so we can get it done over, and I'll, I'll come in next time. Okay. Uh, so. Uh, they're going to start moving. They don't move very fast. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, five, ten, fifteen, twenty. Take it. Five, ten. That's dangerous looking. Okay. Uh, everyone within thirty feet of one of these things, which hey, that now includes up to Hatter. And everyone, I need you to go to your character sheets. There's going to be a small box in the upper left hand corner. It's going to say saving throws. Uh, I need a will save. Is that in core? Saving. It is in core. That's it, that just applies to Hatter, Colm, and uh, Paul. For what first one? Need to save will. Oh, sorry. Wisdom. Wisdom and uh, will are interchangeable. It's it's older terminology. The Templates for this monster is actually for a different game system, and they use the older. Okay. This is amazing. Uh, you are fascinated. You you now uh, have. Column and uh, Paul, 
these these moving scarecrows are the most intriguing things you've ever seen. You don't really think of them as a threat anymore. And you really don't feel like moving around. You just want to stand and look at these magnificent marvels of sure. straw and clothing. Someone's been brainwashed. <clears throat> hey, Mark. Hey, Mark. Mark, nerds! Mark? Okay. Um. Imagine getting called a nerd by someone that makes video games. But he doesn't anymore. <laughs> or is involved in making other videos. He makes, so, he makes rocking uh, guitars. <laughs> so, um. It is now Hatter's turn. Uh, you can't attack or, like, do anything against these scarecrows because you think they're kind of friendly towards you. So I can attack Dougie or Joe and Bob. Mm -hmm. Ostensibly, uh, yes. Oh, fine. <laughs> um, shit. But you're just not like, hey, I'm surrounded by a bunch of <clears throat> people. Great. Um, damn, I guess. Is there any way to roll to. Do I have anything that I can kind of. Yes. Uh, at the end of your turn, you will be able to make a saving throw again in order to. Um, to see if you shrug it off. But that was just. That's just going to be your turn. Okay, I think I'll do that because I can't really think of anything to. All right, make me another wisdom save. So are they, they're no longer a threat? Is that what you're saying? No, these three hmm. people think they're no longer a threat. Yeah, like we're being... We're going to turn into those bloody things, I take it. Because <laughs> we're just mesmerized by them. They're beautiful. I want to be a scarecrow. <laughs> Okay, uh, that is unfortunately not enough to beat the DC, which is very unfortunate because it kind of takes away your turn. But it's now Dougie's turn. You just see Column 86 and Paul just kind of pause and just kind of stare at these things and it's like, ooh, oh. that that's no bueno, my friend. No, um. Is there a way he can run in and grab me and run back out, or is it? Do I have a teleport spell, or? Uh, I don't think you have any teleports. I think I set yours most up for. Check out your spells. Do not be alarmed. Uh, no, you have mostly support and damage <coughs> spells. Support. Um, could I heighten so their intelligence or something? Uh, that is improve ability. Uh, you have to specify if you want to help them increase their will saves. I will re require that you make a just a wisdom check to see if you figure that out or an arcana check. It's like to figure out that yeah, there's something fishy going on here. Um, uh, my wisdom is at minus one. It's so when you look at your ability modifiers don't let that stop you from making a roll because that is going to that is just what you add to your roll so like the highest you can get is technically a 19 which is well within reason uh, but you can make a uh, you can make an arcana check which is just to the right of that underneath the saving throws and it says skills it's the third from the top uh, saving throws there. Skill, skills. Where are skills? Skills is right underneath saving throws. Uh, it's the larger of those two boxes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Un unfortunately, uh, the names of what they actually are is at the bottom of the box. Yeah, I just noticed that too. Um,. So what, what am I looking for? 
You're looking for Arcana? Arcana. It should be three, it should be three from the top of that larger yep, got it. box. So do I just click that? Yeah, click on Arcana. The actual name. All right. They're living scarecrows, man. They are... There's just so much wrong going on here. Don't know what it is, but it, something's wrong. So you can cast Fireball because you guys have... I'm assuming you guys are realize that, yes, there is actually enough... Um, enough health and ability of the party. Because you know... Paul is very dodgy in a uh, skill. Oh, uh, and really, you know. It's a dodgy. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and, and yeah, you you would think. Um, what would you What would you think you would do in this situation? I'll throw a fireball. All right, then throw a fireball. You want to get all of them in it? Yeah. I got all of them. Um, what's your uh, feathers, Callum? You might as well blow everyone up. They're charmed. You might snap them out of it if you blow them up. <laughs> okay. Now I just gotta. I'm gonna open your sheet real quick and look at some of the things within Fireball because I don't cast Fireball all that often. Uh, Hit me like a fireball. <laughs> no, he's going to bomb them all. <laughs> okay, so I need a dexterity saving throw from Problem. And Paul, yeah, if you have something that allows you to do something, it's called Uncanny Dodge. Yeah. Uh, um, just, so it just halves the damage, and if you make it, you take none of the damage. Yep. Starting with yeah, it's starting at fifth level. Okay. Column, mark down that you have received eleven points of fire damage. Where? With me, Callum. In your in, yes, Column. Okay. Callum. In your sheet, there is your current hit points. It should, should be at 60 because I modify it to be at mm -hmm. 60. And you should take away, uh, subtract 11 from that. Yep. Oh, that's right. So, dexterity, dexterity, dexterity. No modifier for that. That is the wrong die. Yeah. Ooh. Uh, I just gotta check something real quick. Da -da -da. Okay, so that's a no as well. No, that is, guy is, um, is Callum weaker to scarecrows as he's a flying creature? <laughs> <laughs> no, but they are weaker to fire. Right. So, uh, you notice that it does mostly double damage to them. But, uh... It's... It's not as... You see yeah. them hit. Yeah. And you see some of them... One on the far left, there's this huge explosion in the center of this very condensed and tiny space. Um, and see if... Uh, Paul, did you make me a deck save? Nope. Um, I can do that now. Yes. Uh, please make me a dexterity saving throw, upper left-hand corner, under sa above saving throws. Yes, I know. Okay. So, you don't take any damage because you're a freaking rogue and they can dodge even area of effect spells. Is cool which is kind of frustrating as a DM. Oh, okay. Callum, you get a little singed. It could have been worse. Just. It still Rachel, sucks. Uh, she thinks Rachel broke uh, her okay. finger in the window. She's going to plaster them together. And after the, the light dies down, you see that one of these uh, Scarecrow has been obliterated, and there's just the smoking remains of straw. Everyone else is just a little bit on fire. They seem very weak, but they don't seem to be completely destroyed. Uh, let me check something out. Uh, see if you can do anything else, Dougie. Uh, what? I don't. I don't think you have any other. Um, 
Yeah, all your other attack spells are one action, so uh, you are pretty much done because you moved and you attacked. Okay. Uh, Paul. Yes. Someone blew you up. They tried mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. uh, you have, I will say that that explosion has shaken themselves. you, have uh, shaken you out of your fascination, and you're like, what the hell? Uh, there are now two scarecrows behind you, and they're like, whoa. Well, I'm thinking we sneak attack on the one at the back. You still won't get sneak attack, because they know you're there. Oh, can I move then sneak attack? You can move, but you still won't get sneak attack because they know you're there. <laughs> so you get so a sneak our... attack on, on that guy? The one that's in front of him? So sneak, the, the way sneak attack <coughs> works is that you're either going to be flanking someone, so I'm just going to use this as an example. So Paul is now flanked. Right? He okay. would get They would get sneak attack if they were rogues on him. Oh, if okay. he was hidden, such as, say, he was hiding in a barrel and then jumped out and stabbed someone, then he would get sneak attack. But he is very much in their area of we know somebody's there. Like, you know there's gonna, if you walk by someone and they walk ten feet, you know they're still gonna be roughly yeah, in the true. same space. It's not like, oh my goodness, I'm suddenly surprised <laughs> that someone's behind me. Yeah. Basically, you're playing it like I would play Assassin's Creed. Oh shit, yeah. I've been spotted. Yeah. <laughs> right, let's take out the nearest. Let's take out the one behind him. Normally. Okay, so you're gonna move into that guy's attack distance? So yeah. That, you're that. gonna move here? Ah, there. Uh, I would not recommend doing that. I would recommend that you move right there because one square to your right. Because once you move out of five, I think they have a five foot range. Yeah, the reach is five foot. So when you leave some an area of engagement with someone, they can take a swipe at you or try to attack you. Right. So this is not a sneak attack either, is it? So it's normal. Yeah, it's just going to be uh, your normal two sets of attacks with your boots of haste. Okay. Uh, yeah, and then another two. Okay. The first one does not hit. The second one does hit, as does the third, and the fourth one does not. So the middle dagger and the middle rapier uh, should be clicked. All right, 11 points. All right, so. And then dagger again, right? No, uh, just one dagger. Was it what? Yeah, the, the top dagger I didn't click. I clicked rapier, dagger. Rapier. Okay. Rapier, dagger, rapier. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So the middle two hit, and you come in, and you start kind of cutting on him with uh, your piercing weapons. Uh, more of his stuffing falls out. At this point, Mandrake Stonebreaker, you're kind of roused and like, Okay, things are going down. There's been a huge explosion. Uh, there's weird things moving around ahead of us. I'm excited, man. Mm -hmm. Get javelin. Get, get my javelin in action. Uh, no, not necessarily. You need no. to think about what you're what you're attacking. And these things are made of wood. Straw. So it might be better for me to. I can't use my torch as a weapon, can I? It would do a very minimum amount of damage because it is an okay. improvised weapon. <clears throat> okay. Um, you kind of have to keep your distance too, don't you? Or they'll swallow you up as well. No, I'll be fine. No, no, because I'll get, I'll get full health. Yeah. Uh, and also, I can't be tricked by them because I've got. Uh, Durga resilience. Ooh. So I'm I'm immune to being charmed. Cool. Really? So maybe we should have sent me in there first and you guys come in after. <laughs> um, well, you guys so... wouldn't know. No, you go. No, 
you guys wouldn't have known that they had any charming abilities until after the charm, except for yeah. you, but... So, uh, can I use the charmless man? Um, some perception to try and work out what they are, or what's uh, what's controlling them. Perception is more of what you can observe in the area. So, like, you see that Dougie's on the other side of a car, for example. Yeah. Oh, I see that. Mm. Um, insight would be more like I'm trying to figure out what. What's what's the machinations of this thing's mind? Right. What its intentions are? Uh, Does anyone have good insight? So if you want to make the insight check, you should make the insight check. You shouldn't try to stack the, your party like, hey, can you do this thing for me? Okay. Um, but that would use up a ton, wouldn't it? Uh, I would say that's a free insight. action. I would say that's okay. a free action that you can do. At least it's, I just, it's not going to be. It's going to be a disadvantage because it's just like a kind of a quick thing. Yeah. If you still want to be able to do something, but you will only be able to get with your movement up to this line of squares. I just want you to figure see. out what they are and why they're doing things. My insight's minus one. Let's see if there's any way that we could maybe take them down without having to fight them all individually. Mine's five, so I don't know if that's fine. So I'll roll an insight. Yes. Yeah. If you want an insight check, then insight check. Ooh. They are a mystery hidden within <laughs> the, the sack like faces. They are unreadable. They are straw like. Cool. Right. So I can move six, right? Is that as. No, no. How much is that I can move? You can move 35. So 35. If you want to okay. check that, you can look at your character sheet and it's underneath your speed, which is right next to your initiative. Uh, yeah, I see that. Okay, 35. Let me just check that. Thirty-five. So there you go. I'm gonna run up there. I'm gonna get. Um, uh, see, the thing is, these are made of wood, so I don't think piercing is gonna do much to them. But I'm not. I'm not close enough to do any slashing damage, so I'm just gonna throw a javelin. Uh, okay. I suggested uh, that about ten minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted to do it. He just wanted to like pretend like he chose to do it. <laughs> hey, this one. All right. Let's throw that javelin. Out. Make, make me a javelin attack roll. Okay, that does hit. Nice. And where's my? How does roll damage again? All right. So you see the the just javelin. Press that again. Just press the word javelin underneath the roll. Okay. It is in the far right. There you go. Hey. Okay. I'm going to ignore the rage size thing because you did not rage, nor are you larger. Nope. Uh, so you rush up and you just chuck this javelin at him, and it pierces through his sack like face, and he just falls down and just kind of super relaxes, and it's now a pile of straw with a bunch of clothes. Yay! Oh, killed it. Yeah. That was easy. Nice. God, now he's got a straw hat on him. Now. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh, yeah, I forgot Baron. The Baron's a cat's on there, and uh, a bit of an end. All right, calm. Okay. Be top twenty. You got Jamie, What was your What was your insight? Mine. What, what number? One. Can I do See you, Mark. Have, have, have a good evening. Have a good weekend. Good, day, good news, everyone. Good news, everyone. Oh, my, one of my friends has that as his text notification. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, can I do an insight roll? I'll say or yes. Is it, or is it not going to be worth it? I would not say it's worth it. Okay. But there's a, there's a there's one problem within D and D parties, especially new ones. They want to try oh, to no. skill piles. It's like, well, this guy didn't do it, then I'm going to do it. Well, I didn't succeed, so I'm going to get the rest of the party to try to do it. And that doesn't, uh, yeah. that doesn't really, uh, that takes up a lot of unnecessary time. Okay. Can I attack the one that's, like, directly in front of me? Yes. You you can move yeah. up and beat on him, or you can try to use any of your other skills or toss something at him. Can I use my spear, my two-handed spear? 
yes, you can. You'll still have to be within melee range because, uh, for whatever reason, in 5e, a spear is not a reach weapon, and, and it just has the same reach as most other weapons, which is five feet, which is one square. So you will okay, have to so be. Yeah, I move closer and then. Yeah. Wait, did Callum um, snap out of his uh, trance he was in, or whatever? I'm going to say the uh, giant fireball that exploded <laughs> in the middle <laughs> of the room was enough to shake him out of his daze. That's lucky. Just so he can uh, put his wings out. Okay, that does hit. Uh, roll me some damage. Just on spear two handed. Four. All right. Uh, you have two attacks. I want to say. Let me look it up something real quick. Um, uh, because there's there's a number of things that go on. Uh, you have yeah, you have an extra attack, so you can do two strikes with your spear, and then you can also strike them as a bonus action with one of your other limbs, because you are a monk and your hands are deadly weapons. Yeah, can I attack him with my spear again? Yes. Okay, that also hits. Roll me some damage. Okay. So you come up and you violently poke him with a spear. Boom. And he just... You just kind of stab him up into the, the face and then stab down into his gut and you just tear out. And this looks like someone opened a like a bag of chips violently, but instead it's a bunch of straw just goes poof up into the air and uh, kind of strews all over the place and it rains down from the sky. No. So he's dead. He's dead. He's very much dead. <laughs> Hooray. You can make a nest out of that. <laughs> <laughs> um, seeing as the scarecrows see that they are in fact slowly dwindling in number, so they're going to decide to beat on Paul. Okay. Uh, what is your AC, Paul? It should be right by your initiative. Just to the left on your character sheet. Back on my character sheet next to what one? Initiative. Initiative. Right above your attacks. 16. 16. 16. I've also got uh, I've got something that halves my damage. That's uncanny dodge. That only manages if they actually uh, uh, if you actually take damage. So uh, one of them tries to hit you and just kind of misses and has to correct itself. The other one hits you twice with its haymakers. Yeah. You take. 16 points of bludgeoning damage. Uh, you also need to make me another wisdom save. So I'm now 15 hit points now from 66. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, you fail your wisdom saving throw. You are now. That's a good emblem. Uh. About to take a hell of a beating. No, he's taking a hell of a beating. You are now afraid. You're now terrified of this particular scarecrow. Mm -hmm. What that means is that when it is your turn, mm -hmm. uh, your only goal is to get away from it. Right, and that's not this turn, is it? That's, that's the next time that you, you're up. So uh -huh. you're going to be afraid of this thing if any attacks you try to launch at it are going to be a disadvantage, so it makes it harder to hit. Right. And your primary goal is that if you can, you're going to get away from it. Yeah, I think I've got no matter I, what. I know what I'm going to do. I have it lined up. If I okay. Hatcher. It's now your turn. 
I am going to do a little thing I like to call yes. self disguise. Mm -hmm. And if you would be so kind as to drag a dead scarecrow over my body, I am now a scarecrow. I'm just going to let everyone. You know what? I'm going to allow that to be. You do that. Bam. There you go. Thank You're you. Now... You are now a scarecrow. <laughs> End of turn. That's my club. I don't know why, but I feel like that's the crowning move of this entire session is that. Right? It's that's a scary moment. Okay. Uh... Me? Yes, it is now Gumby's turn. So you have enough in you to cast two more fireballs. Don't let me influence you. Well, I was going for uh, I was going to go for a fireball, but I missed the last time. No, nope, you hit. No, it wasn't that the. Uh, you missed with the bolt. The I missed, missed with the bolt. Firebolt is more into. The, think of a uh, firebolt like a rifle. You know, you shoot it at somebody. Uh, fireball is like a grenade. Just area of effect. And could Paul take another hit? Um, fifty or fifty hit points. Yeah. Remember any damage that you take uh, when you, uh, if you actually do take damage, is half because of your wily yeah. ways. Are you, are, you ha are you happy to take half damage, Paul, for a fireball? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I could go for a fire bolt and aim, aim it at the the scarecrow you're shooting yourself oh. at. But it's I'm, 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 I might miss. Depends if you if your aim is true. Well, we'll only one we we'll only know when I when I throw it. <laughs> Whereas the fireball will will hit. Well, I'll take half damage anyway if it does it. So it's not yeah, but you want, wouldn't you if if it's, if the firebolt's more like a, a rifle, then you shouldn't get in the way of it. Well, what else can you do? Well, I hit a fireball. Let's throw in a grenade. But you're in the grenade area. You and, also have lightning bolt. I will point out, which is more of a very very BFG kind of. Uh, Line attack as this would go. Right yeah, that's good. You can do that. It hits. Can I move? Can I move and then throw it? Because then if I moved, yeah. if yeah, I moved, move. like a a bishop, yeah, and then there should be enough to. Go for your snooker. Yeah, yeah. Double double plant. Okay. Sure. Oh, okay. I'll go lightning bolt. Yeah, or I've got a, a scorching ray as well, which those are a little slapdash. Pretty much, pretty much what I'm gonna say is that since the, since you guys are are aiming to you know like just end this soon, just go all out, test out your abilities. Uh, <laughs> Lightning bolt. Probably the last the last combat you're gonna be in, so you might as well you know go out with style. Yeah, yeah, that's uh. Uh, I'm gonna check out something in one of the spells. Do not be alarmed. Uh, I haven't got enough to okay. hit the th hit the third uh, scarecrow that's down by down beside me. You mean? Your disguise is so good. And they three foot charger than the other scarecrows. Alright, so uh one of them makes a save. The uh so he takes half damage, but yeah. They are blown away. This five foot wide streak of lightning erupts from Dougie's hand and just slices through these two scarecrows. The smell of ozone's in the air. There's hay everywhere. Uh, Paul is no longer afraid, but he's got a little tingle down his spine because lightning literally just passed within feet of him. 
and uh, it just burrows into the wall, and leaving this huge scorch mark. And we are out of combat rounds. This just all the singed hay everywhere. Would you guys like to do anything at all? Uh, I loot the body, see if there's anything on them. There's nothing on them, but hey. Hey, hey. Oh, the sentence, but hey. <clears throat> so, you guys uh, proceed down these, these dark, twisted corridors, and you come out to this enormous open area. There is this sickly green what looks like a series of crystals or stalactites on the ceiling of this cavern that gives a semblance of light in the area. Uh. Yeah, I'm not sure. It's not loading. Is it the one? Oh. There we go. Sewer's Castle. I'm going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I noticed that um, when I first made this map. This map is like almost a year old now. It's like, that sounds like Colin. They're not related. Anyway, so Who's there are these it? massive walls and this huge cavern. This It looks like someone created an enormous pocket for uh, an above ground city underground because this is exactly what it is. And as you proceed through it, you notice that there is scorch marks everywhere and uh, broken weapons and all these rusted pieces of equipment as if a massive battle had been fought throughout this entire area at some point. As you get to the hundred foot high walls, you see that there are huge divots, some uh, not unlike what was left over from uh, Dougie's fireball and tall lightning uh, pockmarking this marking the outside of it and you get the sense that this entire area had at one point suffered an immense assault and the buildings are broken some of them either from age other ones clearly from siege equipment uh, but the, the place this huge this huge open space is eerily quiet at distance, you sometimes think you can hear more sweeping noises that accompany the scarecrows. But other than that, this place is quiet. And you were informed by Thaddeus that within this area, there are a number of vaults and stashes, shall we say. The Lumbians were very much interested in the acquiring of magical items and they kind of hoarded them so they're pretty much strewn all over the place although over time as their society collapsed and they uh, went farther and farther into madness they just kind of piled them in giant areas and just kind of like you know like loot piles it's like yeah we're just gonna toss it here we'll sort it later but you never sort it later it's kind of like putting the mm. putting the uh, clothes away <laughs> So you guys come in on the southeast side. You see this large kind of protrusion from the walls that is obviously a castle of some kind, which is this thing over here. Um, you see it's very similar to those, um, those stakes that you saw coming in. Uh, there is a symbol very similar to that, kind of crudely painted on the walls, but upside down. And you see slogans in various languages, some of which you understand the same, like Death to the Southern Cross and uh, uh, the Northern uh, Brother will exert authority over the Southern. And it's all very old looking. It's sometimes it looks like even most of it's like chipped away and you have to like kind of really look at the paint and be like, what in the hell is that even supposed to say? That's the wrong grammar. There's missing an R. And, uh, So, I'm going to need you guys to, uh, each one of you, I want you to, uh, I need each of you to, 
How many of you are there? Uh, four. Five. Six. Yeah. Five. Oh, okay. sorry, five. Yeah, five. Okay. Uh. Oh yeah, because I'll, I'll include the me in that. Yes. Okay. I need each of you to roll me a one d six in order to determine what you find. Uh, Where's that? No one find the same. Uh, just, just put in the little chat to the right. Uh, put slash r space mm -hmm. one lowercase d six. That's everybody, yeah. Slash one space slash r. Oh. Space. R space. Pretty much, it should look something like this, but without the period in front. Okay, uh, had it rolled me again because you can't have the same thing as Johnny. Mm. <laughs> okay. E oh. Okay, so. He's got a six, that's a. She should rule again, eh? <laughs> so for a double? No, no, no. There, there's six things. So you got a three. Tom got a one, Johnny got a four, and Paul got yeah. one of these. Slash R space. What? Mm -hmm. so, uh, you look at the message I sent right above Dougie's. It should look exactly like that, but without a period. That's mm. the command to roll it. Full stop, sorry. Full stop. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Full stop. So slash R full space R full stop, yeah? No. no. Slash R, R space. space. Yeah. 1D6. 1D6. Roll me again because you can't get the same thing as. <laughs> Golf balls. Okay, uh, roll me a 1d2 because there's only two left. One you get. Uh, yeah. 1d2. Okay, so you get five. Um, roll me a one d ten, Paul. Mm, you need to roll slash r space one d ten because you rolled one tenth of one. Space. Yeah. 1D. 1D10. So this is what it's like to work in customer care. Yep, that's exactly what it is. Uh, roll that again, please. You can just press up on your uh, mouse pad and then hit enter again and it'll re roll it for you. I did that with the arrows. Yes, the arrows. Okay, you find uh, a plus one bastard sword okay okay that you're you're looking around you find this old really good quality sword and I just gotta write down what you guys uh, roll really quickly huh you want to know? Yeah. Uh, I'm about to figure that out okay so, so. Callum, four for Johnny. Uh, uh, three for Dougie. Uh, six. Six for Hatter. And Paul got the five. He then got the third option. So, um,. I need a 1d10 from Hatter. Okay. Okay, seven. Uh, you find a ring of force shield. So. Oh, sweet. You kind of gone around and you're like, hey, there's a, there's a ring over here. Cool. All right. 
Johnny? I'm sure you're yeah. expecting to already know what I'm going to ask you. Please roll me a 1d10. You got it. You got another spear. Oh, wait. Does that, does that still work okay? Yeah, that works I... fine. Okay. Okay, you... Uh, find a small jar. Okay. And uh, it's, it looks like it is a flask carved out of stone, but it doesn't it doesn't feel stone like and you see they're kind of like hieroglyphics kind of like a prescription bottle and it shows uh someone who looks like they can't move having it rubbed on them and then them being able to move and then somebody who looks like they're in the act of moving rubbing it on themselves and then they have like arrows and stuff um bouncing off their their body okay i'm uh, keeping hold of this he likes rubbing himself up things. Yeah, I'm just going to say I'm not rubbing that in the drone about it. <laughs> I'm putting that in my pocket right now. It's stone salve, by the way. Mm -hmm. Okay, Dougie. You think you can roll me a 1d10? Okay, you roll a 9. Is that good? You find two things. You're kind of looking around. It's like, man, it'd be really great to find something. You find two. You find a scroll. It's like, oh, oh my god, I've heard about these. And you look at it and you look it over. It is a scroll and it has two spells written on it. Uh, one is magic missile. The other is disguise self. And. Pretty much that means that in addition to all your other spells that you have, since you already have one or two of these spells, you can either write them down and learn them if you're a wizard, or you can just be like, I, I choose you, Pokemon it, and you can cast that as, a, as an action, and it won't consume one of your, your spell abilities. So it's pretty much extra fuel in your tank. All right, cool. And certainly, Callum. Could you roll me a 1d10? Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. I've got. I've already got a magic missile. It's got 1d4 plus 1 force written on it. Yes. Uh, so that just means that you'll be have another extra cast of it. Okay. You find two healing potions. All right, so you you find some other kind of miscellaneous things. So those like I don't know if this is magical or not. Let's just take this with us. Uh, and so you kind of plunge your way through the ruins. You get some things that are like these ones that are very clearly magical, and other ones that are just like it might be magical or it might be because you've heard of like ancient peoples having uh, magical items that are literally just trinkets, kind of like. If, if you find a smartphone that can only play like one YouTube video and it only has that saved on it, it's not that important to you unless it's a really great video. So it's like, yeah, this this has selective um, importance. And um, you start making your way out of there. A couple of times you're almost caught by roving bands of scarecrows again. <laughs> and they they seem to be going throughout the city and a couple of times you think you might see someone who's not a scarecrow but you're not sure like you look there and when you look again they're gone and there's definitely something with a little bit more solidity moving around within the streets because uh, you pass by a couple of uh, alleyways and you just hear something large moving it's like oh crap I'm not oh. so you guys hmm. all meet back up at uh, the southeastern uh, yeah, it's like, hey, look what I found. And everyone's like, ooh, cool. Look what I found. And it's like, oh. we hope Sweet Tea will, like, take this stuff. Okay. And he's making the, the arduous track back up to the surface. Um, you come back, and judging by the, the night sky and the position of the stars, you've been down there 
lot longer than you thought you had. It's, it's been a day, maybe two, since you went in. And um, you kind of signal for the Shadar to come down. And uh, they come and it picks you up. It's like, hey, we're, we're going to go back to the... Um, we're going to go back to Imagel. Can you, can you bring us with you? Like, sure. I'm going to move you guys back to the, the world map. Is there anything you guys would like to do uh, on the Shadar, or are you just going to kind of like cut the scene through? Can um, I, um, my ring that I picked up, can I add that to my armor stats, or how does that work? Uh, the thing about magical rings and stuff like that, if you had a ring of force shield. Or is it just like a few uses in a fight and that's it? Okay, so uh, ring of force shield, it generates a shield sized wall of force that stays with the ring and can be wielded by the wearer. Uh, pretty much it's like, I have a force field shield that it acts like a shield for me. Oh, okay. But uh, if you guys never really play these characters again, I wouldn't I wouldn't be too broken up about putting these things into your into your sheets. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. So you you kind of you know mess around with it, and you're like a little bit too close to somebody, and just the wall of force just appears and kind of smacks them around. It's like, what are you doing? It's like, I found a thing. <laughs> <laughs> and so you guys, get, Dougie already knows what he has, so he wouldn't be like randomly using it. So it's like, yeah, I got this. I got this cool thing that allows me to cast extra spells. Uh, Paul just like, I found a sword. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> and it's probably too heavy for me to use. <laughs> Jonah Bob's about... looping himself up and he's like, someone shoot me. I think I'm invincible. <laughs> oh. That's way too far. That's way far. I need to save it for, for when I need it. Yeah. Next time Doggy wants to use a spell. <laughs> yeah. Test it out. <laughs> so then, then um, Callum can use the healing potion to heal. So you're parched. Uh, parched. You're parched. Uh, no, you're approached by Captain Ganzak, and he informs you that the Shadar is still functioning uh, very well, but they're. They're probably not going to be able to stay very long in your your rides. This is probably the last ride you're going to get from them. Mm -hmm. uh, he he explains just that the the search for the orbs. Yes, it's extremely important, and it seems unlikely that um, it seems unlikely that uh, having everyone just kind of wait around for you guys to to do that is going to be efficient. So they're just going to like leave you to your own devices after you get this other orb. And they are going to find the rest of them and either destroy them or deliver them to you. And uh, they're, they're. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Maybe he's done clip himself mad with, with my door. What you think? <laughs> right, sorry, Trent. What were you saying? Uh, the. The Shadar is going to drop you off at Inventrill, and that's probably going to be the last time you see them, unless they bring the, the remainder of the orbs to you. Or they're if they can't find you, they they're, they're just going to destroy them because they find the they think that it is too much of a it, it's too inefficient for their their very tidy minds to just be like we're waiting around for these subcontractors to get us all this stuff when we can just do it ourselves. Mm. And um, yeah, and so it's pretty much look. Hey, it's been fun working with you, but uh, we we got a schedule to keep. So um, we're going we're going to start trying. We got to have some production because we have to go home because this isn't this is clearly not their home place. You've uh, other than the few times that you fought against creatures of their kind and been on the ship, you've seen no one at all who looks like them. So they're like, mm -hmm. wanna go home. We get we got some stuff to do. 
But we still have to get back to the dark forest, don't we? To take care. Yeah. So that's not their problem. <laughs> this is, this is pretty much if you voice that concern, uh, Captain Gamzag is like, that is not my concern. He's a nice guy. Yeah. Kidding. That's all. Let's go back, back to Captain <laughs> Gamzag. We take his boat by force. Technically, he's not his boat. His boat got downed in the desert, and he's just kind of like twiddling his thumbs while the other captain actually runs this place. Yeah. yeah. They've given us a lift, though, so we should, uh, we should at least be respectful. Of them. Yeah, well, thanks for the lift. And, uh, yeah, we'll let you get home to your family. You're, uh, you're most welcome. It was quite interesting having you aboard. Uh, now, as th as they're saying this, you guys have been flying at a very high altitude. <laughs> I thought it was gonna happen here. Get the bends. You it's... got the bends. No. <laughs> what, what do you think is gonna happen? Well, you get four, don't we? Yeah, make your own way home. Yeah. No, we're we're just gonna shove you out the door and hope you can fly. No, they're not gonna do that. Here's a parachute. Everybody. Oh, Callum will be all right. He'd be like, "See you, go." <laughs> Uh, Dougie not, also has feather fall. You, you, when did you get feathered? No, it's a spell that pretty much makes it so that you drift down like a feather. It's a... Like two lit ones just flapping really, really fast. No, it, it, it makes it so that you fall safely. It's very handy if you fall a lot. My middle and... name's Icarus. That's yeah. a perfect spell for Dougie. I, I <laughs> thought so too. It's like, Dougie does do a lot of falling in games. Let's give him something just in case. <laughs> does. Uh, I don't know if he can actually cast it on all of you at once, but it's one of those things for, for future reference. Ah, uh, you got your wings, dude. <laughs> I could probably disguise myself as a. <laughs> it's a terrible bird, and maybe glide a bit. So as you guys so float down in your scarecrow outfit. <laughs> <laughs> These Fortnite skins are getting out of hand. Um, <laughs> So, as you are cruising, a, is it balmy 65 degrees? No. Uh, you are cruising throughout the, the sky, and you're kind of, you know, canoodling around in the, like, the, the general crew quarters. There's not much to do. These, these individuals seem to be very stoic in their way of handling things, and some of the games that they're playing, you just don't understand. It's like... It's like a weird mixture of cribbage and dice. It's like, hell are they playing? Good thing we brought Uno. Yeah. Uh, when the very ambient lighting that they have in the ship just starts blinking in and out, and this very, uh, very alarming wail begins to echo throughout the hallways, and the, the game is like, tossed to the side. They stand up, they start rushing around, and um, Ganzek comes up and he's like shouting orders at everyone in, the, in their clicking language. And then he turns uh, to you and says, the ship is under attack. Oh. Oh, shit. And right as he says that, the ship rocks heavily to one side as if something heavy just slammed into the side. Almost as if you were on uh, a, a real physical water boat. And uh, Ganzak's almost thrown to the floor with the effort. You guys uh, barely catch yourselves. And uh, Callum, who's very light, is tossed several feet. <laughs> oh. uh, you, you don't take no damage from it, but it's just something hit the ship hard. And... Um, as you're doing that, the, the ship seems to be going faster and faster, as if it's trying to outrun something. Uh, and the, the impacts are, are dull and heavy as they echo throughout the hull. Uh, and then you hear a very large pop. It sounds very like it came from back where the, um, the engines were, where... Srak is working. Uh, what are you guys doing? Um, we should run and go and see. 
I am telling Ganzak that it's not my concern. (laughs) 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 Okay, so everyone patter rushes off to the engine compartment. I think I think the pop was it pop the balloon, is it? There was a very loud pop. I'll go I'll go up on deck to see what's above us or. What's maybe uh, thumping you, it? From what you've seen, these airships seem to be propelled by magic, and there's no actual balloon. But there is a loud kind of like electri- electrical pop that comes from that came from the engine room. Can I drink one of my healing potions? If I've already got some. You may. Uh, it heals one d six plus one. So r slash r space one d six plus sign. And that will be how much you feel. Or is it slash R? Uh, Space. 1 D 6 plus sign 1. Okay, so you heal 2 hit points. You're like, okay, I'm ready to go. Um, as you rush back, you hear the large movements of the watchers as they seem to activate as these uh, the rough treatment of the ship and they also are moving in up what we would think of as the the cargo ramp into the the engine room and as you are as you're about 30 40 feet from the engine room door the the watchers are a bit closer uh, you hear it feels like a wave hits you. Uh, and some of your magical abilities and some of your magical items seem to kind of wilt a little bit, and then they kind of come back. Uh, hmm. And you hear this very loud bang. It sounds like a more controlled version of what dug you through in the, in the, uh, in the underground, and you uh, hear this very heavy thud as something hits up against the wall. Uh, and a lot of the brighter lights dim, and everything is this almost amber color as emergency lighting comes on. And the ship starts to feel like it's slowing down. As you, oh, rush, okay. into, as you rush into the room, you see Shrock is thrown up against one of the uh, panels to the right of the door, and he seems to be bleeding from his stomach as he uh, attempts to stop the, the blood flow. But you see that the very almost orb-like, what he referred to as an engine, that's generally glowing and humming, isn't. Right. And the ship starts to dip forward, which is backwards for you. And it feels like you're starting to pick up speed in a way that's not safe. We should probably get off this ship. Boys and girls, are we over the water yet? You guys are solidly right over these planks. Hi. Right. Oh dear. As uh, as it starts picking up, you see um, the very broad-looking watcher kind of look to his, his thinner and slightly heavier comrades, and you hear him say, "Final directive." The, the one that you've generally dealt with just kind of like nods at him and he steps back and braces himself on the, the cargo ramp and the uh, the thinner one also takes up a similar position uh, behind him so it's just like two guys standing in front of sp- spread eagle for lack of a better term okay. and the and the the heavier one just goes up to the the engine he puts his fingers in the in the crevice that is uh, like the, the the workers compartment. He pries it open. There's almost nothing helping it, so it sounds like metal on metal just screeching and tearing. And the inside is absolutely dark. He pauses for a, a second, and then he just thrusts himself into the inside and he pulls the sides of the compartment closed behind them. 
and you see, like, as he was pulling himself forward, his chest cavity had opened up, and there was this very bright colored light inside. Mm -hmm. And as he does that, the the engine starts to, to tick alive a little bit more. And then it seems like it was just jump started. But the, the rate at which you guys are descending fast enough, you don't know if it's going to come on in time. And as you guys are hurtling towards the ground, the the lights are starting to flicker back on. Everything is starting to, to start up again. But you guys have probably reached terminal velocity at this point. And as everything is just being lifted off the deck, including Sorak, he's now somewhere near the ceiling. Uh, you guys are also quickly joining him. You, there's just this heavy impact as the front end of the Shadar impacts the ground. Metal's tearing. The lights all go dark. Even the, uh, the attempted reactor restart might not have saved you, but it might have caused it just enough so that the, the ship doesn't too badly damage itself. And... Uh, we, Even if we're still going to crash. You you are crashing right now, but it's not right, at okay. the theater. So, like, you start to skip and bounce, and the, the ship is just undulating as uh, it skids across the ground, almost like a stone across the water. And it just starts to kind of jackknife and right. turn to the side and rolls over a couple of times. And we see this we pull back and we see this happening just tearing across the landscape and with that uh, I will end the D&D session your survival in doubt your your goals unanswered I believe in Mandrake Stonebreaker I, I, be I believe in us what? I believe in us <laughs> and maybe someday we'll pick up this campaign again. Maybe someday we won't. Who knows? I think this is enough to leave it fresh kind of in your guys' minds. Be mm -hmm. like, I wonder what we're going to do if we ever do this again. So, uh, it was fun. Uh, I definitely look forward to playing D&D with you guys again. Uh, I hope I told a, a decent story this time. And Yeah, yeah. It was, yeah, yeah we could, it was we really could. good. It was just... Uh, we, I like to say before, I think we left it too spaced out. Yeah. And I and, 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 and not not as we needed, we needed it. Well, I needed it more linear for me, more focused rather than the. I know that. If you guys are interested in trying to do some one shots with our uh, campaigns that are one to two sessions long in total, I need to get better at one shots actually. Uh, if you're interested in that, there can be I can set up some things with new characters, new settings. Things like that. Ah, cool. Yeah, we should maybe do that. Skirmishing like over like a two hours. Or... Yeah. Uh, generally, one shots are set up to be two to three hours long, and then it's just be like, well, that's it. That's kind of like uh, episodes in video games. Mm -hmm. That's more for their uh, kind of like there's this thing called adventure league. Yeah. It's a it's a tournament based uh, thing within D and D where people get in, come in sit down, run through a scenario, then after that, maybe the next week, they'll run through that same scenario again with a set of whole new people. Mm -hmm. It's pretty much speed dating, but D&D. &D. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it seems good. Cool. Thank you very much uh, for being an excellent uh, Dungeon Master.